Your brothers and sisters, I can't tell you what a joy it is to be here. If I could have been here yesterday, I would have, but it's difficult at this stage in my spiritual journey to find locate. <laughs> we, had, we had an ordination in Ottawa yesterday, and so this morning I drove down from Ottawa to Rochester, and the Lord looked after us because the, the roads were clear all the way, so it was an easy journey. Um, I was concerned about that. I really wanted to be with Father John and to congratulate him on his ordination yesterday and, and to be with him for his first Mass today. We have, I think you're about, your employee ID card number should be about 30. Okay, very good. <laughs> That's what we think we have. I just, you know, there have been so many of them now, I get confused, but we've ordained about 30 men to the priesthood. Um, and we have about 35 congregations that are in formation, or in the process of formation. Um, we have the, the personal ordinariate of the chair of St. Peter is the largest circumscription in the Catholic world. In other words, our territory that we're responsible for, which is the United States and Canada, is the largest um, that we have. So um, it's, it's a hard thing to keep it all together. And, and I have a lot of traveling to do because what we have to do is, um, is very much in the way that St. Paul wrote about it in the epistle today. Um, it helps people to understand and believe that we're all part of one family, uh, one body. And so we have to work to promote um, uh, a deeper consciousness of our belonging together in the ordinary, as indeed we do for the Catholic Church as well. Um, as Father John said, we, next week we have an extraordinary thing happening in Houston. Um, the prefect for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith is coming to town. And next Saturday we'll be conducting a symposium on the ordinary. It will be live streamed. So um, you will be, if you're interested and want to log in on the internet, and to hear the talks of um, Archbishop Muller and Cardinal Wuerl, who used to be, or he will be until Saturday, he stops being our ecclesiastical delegate. Um, and then Monsignor Steve Lopes on, on the Liturgy of the Ordinary, you, you can hear those online. And you, if you go onto the Ordinary website, I'm sure you'll see a link to, to, to get it there. The Co-Cathedral in Houston is actually letting us stream it from their facility. So if you're interested, you can watch it on the internet next Saturday. Or you can also come. It's really nice. When I left on Friday, it was 80 degrees. Which is lovely, really. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention, and I, I am asked to make this point often because people don't always understand what we're about as an ordinary. Um, we're not creating a, a, new, a new sort of denominational entity um, that kind of stands separate from regular Latin Catholic Church and, of course, separate from where we came from Anglicanism. What we've been asked by Pope Benedict to do is to be signs of a future united Catholic Church. Back in the 1960s, um, after the Second Vatican Council, this wonderful um, flourishing of the ecumenical movement began. Um, and so many of the churches, including our Episcopal Church, Anglican churches, we participated in conversations with the Church of Rome about Christian unity. And the goal was real, meaningful, corporate unity and full communion. And what the Catholic Church taught about ecumenism is what is on display in the ordinarian if we live up to what our true calling is, which is that we can show to our others who are from um, Protestant backgrounds that it is indeed possible to come into full communion with the Catholic Church and yet not to lose the great Christian culture that nourished us and supported us in our in our days as Anglicans, as Baptists, Lutherans, or whatever. And so what we try 
try to do in the ordinary um, is, is not to throw stones at anyone. Um, to really reach out. I've worked so hard with my old confreres, my old colleagues in the Episcopal Church and House of Bishops to keep those relationships going because who knows how this all works out in the long run. Only God knows. But what we are asked to do is to show what Catholic unity might look like for those who come from the Protestant family of churches. And so, um, so it's just a matter of not losing sight of that being our primary mission. Christian unity is our primary mission, Pope Benedict said. And, um, and so I ask my clergy and I ask the people too to be careful that what we do will be for the building up of the body of Christ and not the further severing of the body of Christ. So I'm, I'm really thrilled that um, we have a community in Rochester. This town means a lot to me. Um, my daughter uh, was here for some years. She did her residency at Strong Memorial. And my wife and I have enjoyed many good visits here. I think I was on the <coughs> last ferry run from Toronto to Rochester oh. before it sank. Or <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened. It's a beautiful place. And I look forward to being here. Um, Maybe in a warmer time of year, yeah. <laughs> we can we can spend some good time together and get to know each other. Um, we're we're one year old, and already we've done so we've come so far. It's been an incredible run this, this last year um, to start up basically from scratch to create a, a quasi diocese from scratch is just overwhelming work. And um, many people have poured out themselves for this. Um, and we're beginning to see real fruits coming from these seeds that were planted one year ago when Pope Benedict um, directed the ordinary for the United States and Canada. And of course, Father John, you're one of those fruits that um, have come forth now 